Hello, this is Glenn Yancey with InSource Solutions. In today's Experts on Tap, we're going to discuss enterprise licensing and why would we ever split out an entitlement file for enterprise licensing. These entitlement files or XML files uh, are made up of elements and tags. So we're going to discuss the structure of these XML files, the proper editors for them, and how we can perform a split of these files if we need to separate licenses for one plant versus the other. We'll get into the advantages and disadvantages towards the end. So just as a recap, we have a concept called a license server. That's where we install our XML files, but we do it through the interface of a license manager. A license manager is somewhat similar to the IDE. That is your interface to your license server, much like the IDE is your interface into the Galaxy repository. So the license server concept came about in 2017. We no longer use .lic files, and our clients need to make sure that they point using the configurator to the license server. The license server will contain an XML file that needs to be activated. We won't discuss the process of activation in this uh, particular video. Our focus is much more on um, the content of an XML file versus activation. But we do need to make sure that our clients are pointing to the right license server. Keep this in mind because once we have more than uh, one license server towards the end, after we have split our XML files, we need to make sure that our clients are, are pointing to the right license server. So we install the XML file onto the license server. It goes to the activation process. Now my clients are aware since they're pointing to my license server uh, of the licenses being ready. When we open up, open up this XML file, just to look at it in, in any browser, this is what we're going to get. But unfortunately, we cannot edit them in a browser. We need to have a, a proper editor. So we'll discuss that shortly. But I do want to get into what is an XML file and why would we ever split them out? Well, XML files contain a lot of feature lines or elements like you see here. Each element or feature line is going to represent uh, a product that can be enabled by, um, by these licenses. Having one single server with one single XML file that is quite large with all these XML files, it is hard to manage. So we might end up splitting them out into multiple locations within a site, much, at, much like you have a melt shop at a steel mill and a rolling shop at a steel mill and they need to be responsible for their own licenses rather than having to rely on a central location uh, for that license server. So in that, this case, we end up having multiple license servers at each location, and we can still take advantage of license redundancy if need be for our license servers. But in this case, they are self-contained in the event of any type of network disruption. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. Think of it like a, almost like a mix between a database and a program, programming language. It does contain the structure to organize our data. It contains our data as well. The entitlement files that Aviva sends to us via InSource are in an XML format. And they also contain activation IDs uh, to enable specific product software functionality. The tool that I'm going to use is Notepad++. Not Notepad, but Notepad++. The very first time I open this, I need to make sure that Notepad++ is um, XML ready. By default, it is not. So I'm going to go into Plugins and Plugin Admin in Notepad++. In that Plugins Admin interface, I'm going to type in XML Tools. Once it comes up in my search, I'm then going to hit the checkbox to install. And then I'm going to open up my XML file. The XML file is going to open up as one large line. What you need to do is to go underneath plugins, XML tools, and pretty print to properly format this 
in a way that is readable. And this is what the XML file will look like inside of Notepad++. The structure of these files are broken up into elements and tags. You also see a bunch of headers up there as well, but they're also thought of as tags in, in certain respects. These elements that you see here are representing your feature lines. Think of them as records or rows like you would have in Excel. The XML um, um, data in these XML files are kept in a concept called tags. Every element is going to have tags inside them for things like part number, catalog name, serial number. So think of these tags like fields in a database or fields in a table or columns in a table. That's essentially what they are with the data being represented in each one. So for every start and uh, end tag that you see here, there will be markers li uh, listed for it. So when I choose the activation ID tag, it's going to show, uh, show up as well as my end tag that corresponds to that. You can't have one without the other. So whenever you select an element to copy over to a new XML file later on, you need to make sure that both the start and end tag markers are, um, are there. If not, you're going to pose up your XML file, and that's not going to be a, a, a good thing. So this is just a breakdown. If I go a little bit further into the XML file, I can see what are my start tags and what are their corresponding end tag markers um, that are part of that. And certain tags you can see are part of each element, but other tags that are listed there are acting as headers. So one disclaimer I'm going to put. This process of splitting XML files is an advanced process. Please do not attempt to do this without the supervision or guidance from in-source solutions. We need to make sure that we have a backup first. We don't want to edit the original. In fact, we're not going to edit the original. And another, um, another asterisk besides that, we are not going to edit the original XML file. In fact, we're going to duplicate that, that original so that we have one file per plant or location uh, that we are creating them for, such so as plant one and plant two. I want to isolate the feature lines or elements for um, for each location because I'm going to copy and paste these elements at a later later on point to move from one to the other. Or in fact, I'm just going to cut from one to the other. So keep in mind that I need to isolate my serial numbers so I know that serial number such and such belongs to plant one, serial number such and such belongs to plant two. When you copy these elements, Again, make sure that the start and end uh, tag markers are uh, chosen as well. And I'm going to copy from my first duplicated XML file to the second duplicated XML file. On the second um, XML file, I'm going to remove all of the elements so that it is completely blank. But when I copy over the elements that are specific to plant two, then it's going to look as if it were natural. The entitlement IDs for every XML file need to be unique. They must be unique. So the first one does not have a suffix. That's my original. I'm not going to touch the original. But for plant one and plant two, I'm going to add a, a suffix to that so I can denote that that one's for plant one and the other one's for plant two. Once I've, I'm done, I'm going to save and close these files and then go into my activation and deactivation process on my licensed server. So let's look at a demo of how this is done. In this demonstration, I'm going to use three files. The first is going to be the original or my constant. Nothing's going to change on this file, but I do want to show a few things while I'm here. Keeping in mind that we have the concept of tags in this XML file. So a start tag when selected will also show you the end tag. The other two files that I've created, my plant one and plant two, they are both duplicates of my original file. They are going to be the variables, whereas my original stays constant. Now I have a lot of feature lines 
that exist on plant one. And plant one is quite large in this case, as you can see. But not all of these licenses need to be at plant one. A few of them are dedicated for plant two. So I'd like to create a plant two XML file so I can use with a plant two license server. And I'm going to select the feature lines of those elements that are dedicated for that plant. So whenever you select an element, you need to make sure that you choose both the start and end tags like I've done here. And I'm going to do this five more times. So I'm going to go down five rows and I will cut out of here, removing any lines and pasting them into my plant two file. As we see here, I need to make sure that on both files that they have the proper start and end tags for each element. And they should be between the activations tag with a start and end. The second thing that needs to be done is making sure that my entitlement ID is different than my original, but they're also descriptive of each plant. So plant one has its new appended suffix for plant one and the same thing for plant two, making sure that I leave the double quotes still intact. Once I've finished and I verify that the feature lines are still there, that I have not removed any uh, end tag while still leaving the start tag, then I can proceed with saving these files. Inside of Notepad++, I'm going to save both my Plant 1 and Plant 2. I'm not changing the original. The original stays intact. So after reflecting that both entitlement IDs for Plant 1 and Plant 2 are different from each other and different from the original, I would have to go back into my license server now, or license manager. I would have to go back into my license manager and deactivate the original file because I no longer have just a single license server. I'm going to have two license servers that I'm going to manage, one for plant one and another for plant two. And they will both use their respective XML or entitlement files now that they have been edited and split for their locations. All right, once we have our file saved, we need to deactivate the original file through our license um, manager. So that will point to our license server. We choose to deactivate and then we can proceed. Some people feel more comfortable by having a demo license, um, like a 30 day demo that InSource can provide just to be sitting in the background so there is no disruption. You shouldn't have any disruption anyway because there's a concept called a grace period that exists. But sometimes this, this added uh, demo license sitting in the background is used for uh, just to give people the warm fuzzies. So we can, we can provide that if necessary, but again, you really shouldn't have to worry about that. So after the deactivation is done of the original, then I'm going to make sure I now have two license servers, one at each plant, such as water versus wastewater or melt shop versus rolling mill, whatever, whatever uh, divisions or um, location names that you have, make sure that you, you will divide by those. So then I install my XML files onto the license servers, activating them, and then everything should be, should be set. But here's one thing. Plant 2's license server is new. The clients at Plant 2 are still pointing at Plant 1. That was where the original originally was. So on Plant 2, we need to make sure that in the configurator on every client that they are pointing to Plant 2, not to Plant 1. We now have two license servers that are in charge of their respective locations. So what are the advantages of doing this? In this case, we're able to isolate our feature lines based on the locations. Even if they're part of an overall site, or originally part of, an, of a single XML file, we can use this to divide them up 
So I know what feature lines are used for plant one, plant two, plant three, plant floor, and plant four, and so on. This also makes renewals a little bit easier because we're able to manage them on their own. And if a certain part is not being used or product is not being used, then maybe we could remove that from comp support um, at a later date if need be. Now, are there disadvantages of this? Yes. Doing this on your own without our supervision could cause uh, uh, your licenses to be messed up. So we do ask that uh, you get in touch with your account executive and see if this is something that um, that one of our engineers can can assist with. So when you upgrade these licenses to version 2022, keep in mind that you will end up receiving a new XML file that does not uh, contain this structure of splitting the XML files. In other words, you have to start off start all over again. That's the unfortunate part of doing this um, because Aviva at this point is not um, maintaining the uh, the newly created split files that we've created. That is being handled by us and the end customer. So again, when you upgrade to 2022, you will have to start this process all over again. The nice thing is you've done your planning before to know what feature lines belong to what plant. So it shouldn't have to be as difficult the second go around as maybe it was on the first. So in summary, splitting these XML files can make it easier to isolate what licenses belong to what location. XML files contain tags like fields and, uh, and elements, which are like records or, or feature lines. And these tags must have a start and end marker, as you see here. We only recommend this for advanced users. This is not something that we recommend that anybody can do. Even if you feel comfortable with this, um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you have InSource involved to at least look over your shoulder. Never change the original XML file. We don't ever want to affect that. Um, if the XML file is still in use, then that's still activated. That's not going to be much of an issue. But uh, we we always want to have make sure we have a backup in the event that we um, end up hosing the, the plant one or plant two XML files. Every entitlement ID must be unique. And this does require planning to isolate what serial numbers are used for what location. So thank you very much for, um, for today's Experts on Tap. And we hope that you will come back in a few weeks to view our next topic. Thank you very much and have a great week.